Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, what's up, Morty? Yo, what's going We're gonna go through portals. We're gonna go back in time, Morty. We went the back in time when we had a freaking EPUs. What's up, guys? It's Timmy Joe making videos about computers on the internet back from a nice long vacation. And we've got stuff up on the screen. We got things going on. What do we got here? Well, obviously, you saw the title. It's APU Battles, man. How far has it come? And what are my final opinions? on the 2400G because it's been a while since I've been using it and I have some things to, to say and talk about. So, what we have on the docket here, 2400G, really fast memory. Okay, it's uh, 4266, it obviously doesn't run that fast, especially on this little board here, but it's running at a modest 4533 with CL19 timing. So the timings aren't the greatest, but it's really, 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 really fast memory. Uh, so, you know, it's got it's overclocked. 3.8 gigahertz it's uh you know uh it's, it's running fast the vega gpus overclocked to 1550 which is about as far as mine goes at least on that motherboard and then on the older side of things <laughs> lackluster but we used to only have you know one kind of graphics chip on a chip kind of dealy and that was the a series from amd I have one of the best ones. Now there are better ones for sure, especially if you go Bristol Ridge or whatever the, uh, you know, the one that was on AM4. But this would be probably about the better one. And no, it's not some fancy Intel processor. It's the A10 5800K Black Edition. Okay, and what that is is a uh, turbo clock of up to 4.2 gigahertz. Well, I have an all core overclock of 4.5, and it's running at uh, where does it say? I don't know. It's running at like 1140 uh, something. You'll see in the benchmarks. Uh, so everything's overclocked to the tits. AIOs. Okay, my uh, bench AIOs running this. And then I gotta have this crazy fan. Ah. Uh, on the VRM, on the. Uh, hey, calm down, you. On the uh, 2400G, because the little tiny heatsink on that thing, if you overclock it, it will actually burn out. So. What are the, what, what's going on here? Well, we got uh, 34% CPU usage, so we are definitely GPU limited. And of course, this is the uh, A10 5800K running Unigen, okay? And we see here, yeah, it's uh, 10, uh, 1145 megahertz. There we go. That's what the graphics running at, 4.5 gigahertz. And then I actually got fast-ass memory on this thing, too. Always important with APUs. And uh, I got some Corsair Dominator DDR3, and it's supposed to be a 1600 megahertz quad channel kit, but I've got it running at 2133. So I've got it running at baseline DDR4 speeds. So we're, you know, see that? Times two. That's what we mean. So it's actually a pretty sprightly little combination here, but for games, what do we got? An average of 18 FPS. 11 for the 1% uh, low and for the 0.1% low 4 FPS. Ooh, she's not looking so hot. So we'll go ahead and uh, just show you the temps too. Overclocked. We see here the temps are in like the uh, on the sensors anyways, 49, 51, but the package temperature is at 80 degrees on this little puppy with an AIO. Well, it's a 120, but you know it's a Corsair. It's an H what uh, uh, H60i or whatever. So you know no, no slouch. But, um, yeah, and then power consumption between the two uh, max loads are pretty simu similar. I'm throwing it up on the screen here. This is the uh, 2400G running max, max, max. It hits about 145, 150. And then uh, max loads, I saw this spike, uh, the A10, to uh, about 180 at max. So nothing too, too shabby. So we'll switch over because I don't have that many Elgatos here. I only have one Elgato. So that was the actual live feed from that, but this will be... This, there we go. This is a 2400G. It's about uh, two times faster. It's, well, uh, yeah, anyways. It's it's about 60-70% faster. It's not bad. We see here an average of 51. This is all the same settings. Medium in, in Unigen at 720p. 51 FPS, 30 and 8. And, um, you know, it doesn't do too bad at all. Uh, for the esports titles and stuff like that. Now, I will have a gambit of benchmarks uh, up on the screen, but I just want to show you what I had to do. Got too many mice here. 
what I had to do to get this uh, overclocked, it's a freaking nightmare to get the max performance out of the 2400G. So uh, it's running Unigen, it's running at 3.85 gigahertz. Uh, it'll go to four, but then the graphics card does not go as far. Uh, voltages are all maxed out at like 1.3 on the SOC, 1.3 on the graphics. Uh, it's running at 1525 on the screen there, but I have it set to 1550, so it must be throttling to some degree there. And then uh, the memory, like I said, 35, uh, 3533, that's really, really fast, especially for this little gigabyte ITX motherboard. I'm actually pretty uh, thrilled with that, and I think I see some pretty good gains over that. So we'll go ahead and shut this off, but yeah, uh, an average of 50 FPS at 720p, not bad. And then if we look at the temps, uh, the temperature on the package was 51 but there's, it definitely gets up there, and that temp 5 sensor right there, it would actually be like over 100 degrees if I don't have this fan blowing on the VRM. So now we can go ahead and uh, we'll just shut that down because it's so damn loud and I've been yelling at you for a while. But I have some slides. I always have some slides, right? So, a boof. There we go. A10 versus Ryzen. It's so interesting and not at all because it's... I wouldn't wish this as a gaming, your sole gaming PC on anyone, even the 2400G. I'll make an argument for that later on, but especially pre-Raven Ridge, this thing, <laughs> if you were, that was what you were gaming off of, you're limiting yourself to Roblox and Minecraft, in my opinion. So, whew, there we go, I got some slides. So, we see here that the uh, 5800, we actually have to scroll pretty far back. This is the uh, Raven Ridge. There's Bristol Ridge before that. That's this running, uh, you know, that. It's basically uh, the old APUs running on the newer architecture. But the performance ha wasn't increased very well. And I'll show you that in just a second. But uh, because that's a 5800, there were, you know, there was a, a, a 6 and a 7 before it. So we got to go all the way back to here. But most of these were just talks. They were not ticks. They were not increases in you know shrinking manufacturing or, or much of anything so and uh the graphics that's on the a10 is the 7660d where this is vega 11 so you know it, it's pretending like it's some awesome radeon graphics but it's not eventually they changed them to r r7 uh like 250 status and that's kind of where the bristol ridge is so if we go here uh you know here's what the uh ryzen 2400g did it has a 3400 3450 i should say uh you know in um fire strike and the graphic score is 3754 it's respectable it's not as good as a 1030 maybe as good as a 1030 is stock uh you know if you're going with dedicated nvidia stuff maybe as good as like a radeon 550 five, uh, in between a 550 and a 560 respectable you could play video games on it but you know there are some caveats which we'll talk about so remember that graphic score of 3754 and it gets a really respectable physics score because it's essentially a quad core with hyper threading as good as i'd say like a 4770 you know uh at stock speeds so it's it's pretty good and you can overclock them pretty far now here's the apu the, the 5800k and it gets a 1359 which is not great at all it's not great at all we see here uh, so it's 3750 1359 boom so how did, how good did this level of apu get how good is the bristol ridge well i brought up here a fire strike demo uh of the bristol ridge running the a12 9800 r7 graphics you know, gpu igpu and we see here uh oh he's running boof 1809 with a graphic score of 2000 so you know it did get about 700 points better on the graphics side but not much better so you know that's the way she works so you want to see some benchmarks yeah we're in some benchmarks basically we're limiting ourselves pretty hard some of the games i wanted to benchmark on the apu wouldn't even run due to lack of memory even though i've put the same amount of memory in both 
uh, the you know the, the chipset on this must limit how much you know available graphics memory it, it actually shows to probably one gigabyte even though it will spill over into system memory and Windows manages that well. But something wasn't translating in a lot of the games I wanted to test. But I ran some esports titles, and you might be interested to find out what happens here. So cue up them benchmarks, Tim and Joe. We're going to portal right into them. Wah! allows you to put TV channels through dimensions. I'm available in the poop-eating dimension. Hi, Timmy Joe back. Lackluster results all around. Now, I know some of you die-hard fans of the AMD APUs, you AMD fanboys, you want, you know, to say that this is the best. And how I have this set up is very, very well, okay? I don't know if you remember from the Xbox. This is basically my Xbox 360 version 1 or whatever. Uh, I took it out of there to do this testing, and I'm, I'm going to be rebuilding something with this, these heartless hardware or something like that. But uh, essentially, I have it delated, okay? So there's liquid metal on that CPU so that it gets uh, the best heat transfer possible on the iGPU and the CPU. Okay, and this isn't the best motherboard you could be overclocking with, but I gotta say it's damn near irrespectable. It's got a pretty good power phase to it, and although the heatsink on it is small, and I wouldn't recommend overclocking to the nines in any sort of small form factor case, it gets the job done. We also have extremely fast memory. Okay, uh, you know, putting 3200 on there would be recommended for some good gaming performance. I've got 3533 running, and I tried to play with timings and you know tighten them up or whatever, but. It, it, essentially, it's not fun to mess with. It's not fun at all. It's very, very annoying to try and overclock this because you can't use Afterburner, okay? And the only way you can do the GPU overclocking in Windows is Ryzen Master, and I refuse to use this program. It is annoying, it messes with things, and you have to load it every time you load Windows. There's no way to, like, hit, you know, load with Windows, so it's a big pain in the ass. And essentially, you want to be overclocking in the, uh, you know, in, in the BIOS with this, but then you have to deal with the extreme annoyance of if you have any sort of problem, it like bricks the system, and you have to essentially reload the BIOS, reload your overclocking profile, and then you know tweak it a little bit, and then you might be a half hour into a game and crash, and then you know you're not going to want to buy really expensive four hundred dollar memory. For this so you're gonna try and you know maybe get a 3000 or a 33 or 3200 kit so you're not maximizing the performance there and uh you know you're probably not going to put a big aio on it either so what most people will end up getting here is about you know 80 percent of the performance that i was able to achieve with this so it's not even as good as i'm showing as for the a10 it's really past its prime and uh, you know, where this, you could budget game with it, and you could be kind of happy, and if you're willing to go low settings, you could play Fortnite with this all day long. This does not play Fortnite, as you saw. In fact, it didn't even run Battlefield 1 
Uh, even though I, I tried a lot of things to get it running, it just would not. There's a, a system memory, you know, problem, and you know, it, it doesn't see more than a gig of graphics, you know, memory or something. I've run uh, Battlefield on a lot lower system specs, I think, before. It just something with this wasn't happening. As well as a lot of the times with this, I couldn't get Afterburner to run at the same time. There's just stuff in this. It's not, you know, it's not meant for running high-end games in, in the mo latest modern titles. But where you would do well with this is if you want to put it in a really small form factor system like an xbox you know your own little build or you know some little thing console thing you could play all kinds of retro games emulators and stuff with this apu and it's still very relevant as well it's a great media center pc you want to uh, if you can pick up an fm2 platform you know the a8 or the a10 and you can get some you know uh, pr pretty good memory in there i'd say you want 16 gigs going eight gigs i was i did have a faster kit of eight gigs i was using in there and that's was running into problems so i switched over to 16 you can get that all running it's a great emulator platform it's a great media center platform uh and it doesn't suck that much power it's not actually that less power efficient well obviously it's not getting the performance of this but they're under 200 watts both of them this one and around 150 max load max overclocked it'll go you know below 100 if you want to run it stock this will probably hover around 100 120 you know it could run it off a of pico power supply you know pretty fun little things but in summation would I recommend either of these platforms for gaming? Well, I think we all know the answer on the A10. It's pretty much limited to older stuff, retro, you know, Windows titles, pre, I'd say 2010, you know, you could probably get away with on that. And, and emulators, and there's stuff that will work. In Minecraft, it's a good starter platform for a child or something. But when you want to talk about the 2400G, because you have to get that expensive memory, because it's so finicky to overclock and the stock GPU performance is not good. You do need to overclock it to play modern video games. And because of that, because they maybe didn't, I think if there was a 2500G or something, you know, if there was a version of this that had you know, binned chips and the graphics clock was set at 1500 out of the box and maybe the, you know, had a little bit better memory support or something like that. Or, uh, you know, th th this could be a little bit more valid, but get, get a dedicated, get a, a 660, get a, get a GTX 760, get a, a 1050, get something, get an a AMD R9 X. That's a good one. Put it on an older platform. You're going to thank me. I'll see you guys later.